Good afternoon, Bible Baptist Church. You can turn to the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. And I have some good news for you. Today is my last time preaching because we have a new pastor coming. And I'm not scheduled before then, so praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. It's the right response. Don't get me wrong, I love getting up here and preaching, but Lord is gracious that our pastor is coming just next week. He'll be here, I'm sorry, not next week, next month for the Dinner on the Ground service. Uh, so Colossians 3, uh, so if you've been here any sort of time with me preach, oh, hi, Sherry. Sorry, I got distracted. I didn't know you were here. Hi, good to see you. Sorry, easily distracted. I guess that's what food does for the afternoon service. Uh, so if you've been here any sorts of time for a little bit, you know that I'm I've been doing a series with you. Well, today will be the uh, finale to that series. So you know if you've been here, our first sermon, we're focused on verses 1 through 4. Uh, and really taking a look at those who are saved, you were then commanded to do some things. Uh, specifically, that message was about seeking and setting our affection on things above. And then we looked at verses 3 and 4 for some reasons why we should seek and set our affection on things above. Uh, sermon 2 was on verses 5 through 11, uh, and really it was because of verses 1 through 4, you need to put off some things. Uh, so we looked at verses 5 through 11, and we looked at things that we were commanded to mortify, to kill, and commanded to put off. Sermon 3, verses 12 through 15, the gist of that was now that you have put these off, you now need to put some things on. Uh, so today's sermon, uh, sermon number four, honestly is a continuation of sermon number three. Uh, so sermon number, this sermon is just continuing where we got with that. We're going to pick up in verse 16 of our text today. Uh, so Colossians 3, verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And verse 17 sort of ends out this section, and then verse 18 and onward then goes to wives, submit yourselves, uh, and it continues that way. Uh, so before we really get started, I'll also tell you that today's sermon is going to be a little bit different than the others I've taught or the others I've preached. Uh, sermons 1, 2, and 3 was more so about really diving in, taking a look at the Greek, understanding what's going on, and yes, we will go through verse 16. 16 and 17, uh, but we're definitely not diving in as deeply as we did before. Today, I'm actually going to make way more application than I did in probably all my other sermons combined. Uh, so today will be more application heavy and Lord willing. I don't plan on keeping us a long time. Uh, hopefully, it'll go quickly, but I do. I believe I have some uh, important exhortations for us as a church, uh, and we will get there later on, but I do believe I have some important exhortations for us as a church and things that we can improve upon and be better for the Lord with. Uh, so let's go ahead and open in prayer. Uh, Lord, would you thank you for this afternoon? Lord, we thank you for the wonderful day it's been in your house. I thank you, Lord, that we currently live in a country where we can freely open your word and study, and preach, and teach. Uh, but Lord, and as uh, Brother Summerdorf was alluding to this morning, uh, that time is probably going to go away. No, Brother Summerdorf wasn't talking specifically about that, but persecution's common. Uh, Lord, our rights, our freedoms, and as Brother Summerdorf preached, uh, what we do, our fruit, our serving you does not depend on freedom here in the United States of America. Uh, but Lord, we're thankful that we are still free to come together uh, to open the word without fear of persecution, Lord. We thank you for that. Uh, do help this afternoon, Lord. I know from sitting in the pews 
during afternoon services, it is awfully hard to keep one's attention on the message, on the sermon. Uh, Lord, I do pray for everyone here that they would be focused on what is preached, focused, uh, Lord, on really what you have. As always, it's not about the preacher up here, but it's about you and your word. Uh, Lord, and if I go away from your word, then everyone needs to throw that out. But your word, uh, Lord, will last. Your word is what will help us. So do bless this time, Lord. Keep my thoughts in order. Uh, may your word go out boldly. And Lord, may we do what you say. Uh, may we apply the word that goes out. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so verse 16 uh, for those of you who are, have taken the Music One course, our philosophy of music here at Bible Baptist Church, you actually know that I spend a good class, class and a half, just on verse 16. So if you have not taken the music class, um, actually not going to be going deeply into verse 16 today. I will do a review, uh, but the point of me saying that is there'll be some things I say that I'm not going to back up right now. Uh, we're not really going to be going all over scripture right now. So if you are not in the music class or you haven't taken it and you have questions, feel free to come on up. I'm not going to be filling in all of the puzzle pieces this afternoon with Colossians 3.16, but we will do a review, and a review is uh, good, especially for those who have taken the course, that may be those who took it the first time a year or so ago. It'll be a good review. So verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. So just as Colossians 3 is, it's command after command after command. Well, we have another command here in verse 16. The command is to dwell. And also the first word, let. Let and dwell comes from one Greek word, but that is the command here. So we are commanded to let something dwell in us. And this idea of dwelling or having a home in us has the idea of inhabiting us for good. So that thing that is doing the dwelling inhabits us for good as opposed to bad. Uh, so what is doing the dwelling here? The word of Christ. So verse 16 again, let the word of Christ dwell in you. That is a command. It is not a suggestion, is it? it is a command to let scripture dwell in you. And I think a good application to this, I was thinking this week as I was going over this, Zach, I don't see Zach, maybe he's somewhere. Uh, there you are. But Zach, you're preaching uh, last Sunday, last Sunday night about what to think on. One of those things that is in that passage is to think on things that are true. Well, what is true, as Zach pointed out? Scripture. So if we are thinking on truth, I think that is one application of letting the word of Christ dwell in you. If you are thinking on things that are true, you are therefore thinking on things that are scripture. You're thinking of scripture, and you are now letting scripture dwell in you. So, of course, a few other areas. Memorizing scripture. It's one way, of course, to let scripture dwell in you. Chewing on scripture throughout the day. Uh, and then maybe there are times where you can't really be focused on chewing or memorizing scripture, uh, but are you ready uh, with any situation that comes to pray, to bring it to the Lord, to be thinking of scripture if you need to during that time? So letting scripture dwell in you. And as we continue, it says in you richly or abundantly. So we are not just commanded to let scripture dwell in us, we are commanded to let scripture dwell in us richly or abundantly. Uh, so just by way of maybe a quick example that may make sense, we all have dwellings we go home to. After service today, you will go home to somewhere. Maybe you'll go right away back to your dwelling. Uh, maybe not. Maybe some of you are up visiting from Tennessee, right, Shari? From Tennessee, and you might not be going home to your dwelling right now, but you will eventually get back there, Lord willing. So let's say you have a dwelling and you have five rooms in your dwelling, but you only ever use two of them. Okay, you are dwelling in your house, but I would submit to you, you are not dwelling richly. 
if you have five rooms and you are using all five of those rooms, then okay, that might be dwelling in it richly. And I think maybe as a example to us, more focused on us with it, not an analogy, is do we let scripture not just have a home in us during certain times of the day? For instance, during our morning devotions and our evening devotions. That's good, but that's not enough. That's not Colossians 3.16. If you walk through the day and the only time you think on the Word of God, the only time you let Scripture dwell in you is in your morning devotions and your evening devotions, and then you don't think on Scripture again throughout the rest of the day, maybe you can call that dwelling, still probably not, but most definitely it is not dwelling in you richly or abundantly. Amen. Maybe you do think on scripture throughout the day, you do chew on it, you do memorize it, uh, you do go over it all the time, but there's this one area in your life that you don't let scripture touch. All right, Lord, you can have all of this. I agree with all of this, except I don't want to do this. Don't touch that area in my life. All right, I would say Scripture is probably dwelling in you, but not richly, not abundantly. So Scripture needs to have the whole of you, and I think that is really what's getting at in verse 3.16, Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So Christian, do you let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, or is it just every once in a while for devotions or for your time when you come to church? All right, well, let's continue moving on. So we are commanded to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom. And then I believe if you obey this command, then teaching and admonishing happens naturally. So teaching and admonishing is not a command, uh, but I believe it happens naturally if you follow the imperative, the command of the beginning of verse 16. So naturally, if scripture is dwelling in you abundantly, you will then teach and admonish one another. Uh, and teaching is probably what we expect, and parting instruction is the idea behind teaching. Admonishing is warning or exhorting. That's probably what we expect there for those words. But we are to teach and admonish one another. Who's the one another? Us. Us. Exactly. Uh, specifically in Colossians 3, it was the Church of Colossae, but by application to us, it is Bible Baptist Church. So we are to teach and admonish one another, and then we are told what to teach and admonish one another in in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So our congregational singing time, our special music time, getting the children up here to sing, our offertory time, those are psalms and hymns and spiritual songs when we are together, when we can teach and admonish one another. Uh, so if you have not taken the music class yet, know that I do spend time explaining these definitions, but I'm just going to give you the definitions of what a psalm is, a hymn is, and a spiritual song. Uh, if you don't agree with me, I can convince you later. I do back it up, but I'm not going to right now. So a psalm is an Old Testament psalm and songs of similar compositions that may include instruments. Uh, that is my definition of a psalm, a hymn are those are songs of praise to God where he is the focus. So hymns are focused on praising God specifically. And a spiritual song, spiritual songs are sacred songs with a broader range of topics. So not necessarily specifically focused on praising God. Actually, Blessed Assurance would probably fit under a spiritual song. 
Uh, and I'm not really going to go too much into this right now, but also if you pay attention to the grammar, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, there's no comma separating them. So this is a group and this group is connected. So even though each word has its different meaning, they are still connected uh, and in a group. So what I'm meaning by this is we could have one song that we sing that is all three of these at once. Could be a psalm, could be a hymn, and could be a spiritual song all at the same time. All right, so a uh, few things, or I guess a few applications by this. Uh, we here at Bible Baptist Church don't anymore sing or play any patriotic songs. Why was that done? We used to a while ago. Why is that done where we don't do patriotic songs anymore? Well, because we are told what to sing. Is a patriotic song a psalm? Nope. Is it a hymn? Nope. Is it a spiritual song? Nope. It is not one of those. And there are more reasons why we don't sing patriotic songs anymore, uh, but I don't think it fits Colossians 3.16. We are told what to sing with one another, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Uh, classical music, for instance, I don't think classical music has ever been done here, or at least I've never noticed it, but offertories, we don't do classical music during offertories. Why? Because they're not psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Uh, so we don't do that. Uh, and actually, you may have noticed uh, Joe, when he's up here, he doesn't call the hymnal the hymnal. He calls it a songbook. I didn't talk to you, but I presume you call it a songbook because there are more than hymns in our songbook. There are psalms in there, there are hymns, and there are spiritual songs. So that's why Joe calls it a songbook. Do I think you're wrong if you call it a hymnal? No. Uh, but Joe just chooses to call it a songbook I think because of that, because it's not just hymns in our hymnal, if you will. All right, I'm moving along. So actually, good, I think I'm moving quickly. So let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. That's the command. Then by obeying the command, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs happens. And then singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord or with thankfulness because of God's grace, in your hearts has to do with your inward motivations, and to the Lord has to do with the direction of our song. I think that's another reason why we don't sing patriotic, have fun singing My Country Tis of Thee and directing that totally and solely at the Lord. It doesn't quite fit. All right, so let's move on to verse 17. Sorry, I know that was very quick. What, I did that in 10 minutes, so it normally takes me 80 minutes. So, huh, I had to restrain myself there without going into more. But anywho, verse 17, And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So what we have here, we are told, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed. Uh, whatsoever, I'll take time to go over this, but I probably don't need to. We probably get this. But whatsoever is actually mostly translated all, and it's translated all at 748 times in the New Testament. All things at 170 times. So basically what it's saying here is, and whatever you do in word or deed, or every single thing you do in word or deed, so, and anything you do, whatever you do, everything you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, what do words and deeds encompass? That's not the right word. What do words and deeds? Read my mind. The word's not coming. Ah, the word accomplish or uh, I don't know. Uh, encom oh, encompass. There it is. Just mispronounced it. Uh, so what does that encompass? Well, <laughs> an awful lot. Uh, so I want to take just in chapter 3, I want not at everything, mind you, but I just want to bring to mind some of the things we've looked at that would be words and would be deeds. And I'll go a little further as well. Now keep in mind, I have a nice long list for both of these in just chapter 3, and I'm not touching on anything in chapter 3. 
So that is not even a chapter of scripture. We could probably make these lists super long. Uh, so word has the idea, of course, of speaking. So right now I am doing this in word. I am speaking. Uh, so I'm not going to review these verses, but if you want to look at them as I'm going through, verse 8, we talked about what we need to mortify, what we need to put off. Well, anger is one of those. And yes, anger is more than just speaking, but a lot of times if you're angry, you'll use words. Wrath, same thing. It's more than just speaking, but you'll probably use words. Malice, probably using words. Blasphemy, probably using words. Filthy communication, definitely using words. Verse 9, we are told to lie not. We lie with words. Verse 12, we are told to be kind. Again, this would be more than just words, but... Words could happen with kindness. Verse 13, we are told to forgive. Words are used. Verse 18, we haven't gotten here yet, but wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. If the wife is supposed to submit, I'm sure the husband needs to use words, at least every once in a while to talk to the wife, for the wife to submit. So words are used. Verse 19, Husbands, love your wives. That involves words. I am sure any wife in this room would not feel loved if their husband never spoke to them. I mean, again, I know there are other ways we can show love, but if a husband never speaks to their wife, I'm just going to guess that the wife probably doesn't feel loved. So words are used. Verse 20 Children, obey your parents in all things. Well, how do children know what to do? By the words. Parents speak. So, in just going over a few of these words, speaking, and whatsoever ye do in word, whatever you do, whatever you say, everything and anything, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Deeds. The act of doing something. We do a lot of deeds throughout the day, don't we? A whole lot of deeds. Let's just take a look at Colossians 3 again. Verse 1, seek those things which are above. Well, that's an act of doing. Verse 2, set your affection on things above. Another action. Verse 5, mortify. Mortify a list of things. Well, that's a deed. You are doing something. You are mortifying that. Verse 8, put off. Verse 12, put on a list of things. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Well, there are things you need to do in order to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Verse 18, wives submit. Indeed. Verse 19, husbands love your wives. A deed. Verse 20, children obey. A deed. Verse 21, fathers, provoke not your children to anger. I bet you that would involve deeds. Verse 22, servants, obey. Those are deeds. Obey your masters. Uh, if at work, your boss tells you to do something, there you go. You got to do it. That's a deed. Uh, so that very quickly goes into words and deeds. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all. All, do all what? Do all of those words or deeds in the name of the Lord Jesus. So if you were to do something in the name of the Lord Jesus, now I'm sure I'm not going to hit on everything here with how we do something in the name of the Lord Jesus, but just a few thoughts I was thinking on as I was preparing for this. If you were to do something in the name of the Lord Jesus, well, you need to follow his commandments. If you are not following his commandments, then how are you doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus? So if you are witnessing to someone, that is fantastic. But if you're witnessing to someone as you're at the bar drinking alcohol and getting smashed, well, that's not following the word. So therefore, I would submit to you, you are not witnessing in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you are to do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, well, you need to seek after him. 
Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Well, if he directs your paths, then I would think you're doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you're doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus, you seek to please him with all you do. Would we change some of the things we do if we know that everything we speak, everything we do is to be in the name of the Lord Jesus? Would we say some things we say? Would we do some things we do? My guess is all of us, myself first and foremost, would change some things if we really thought on that and understood that. If we are to do things in the name of the Lord Jesus, we would need to rely on his strength. And then I believe we would also need to give Jesus the glory. Let's turn to Acts 3. Acts chapter 3. We're going to look here at an example of something being done in the name of the Lord Jesus. That is Acts chapter 3. We will begin in verse 1. Acts chapter 3, verse 1, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms? And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let's jump down to verse 11. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness? We had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and, den and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. And then it goes on there. Uh, but what is Peter saying here? Peter's saying it wasn't by my power. It wasn't me. It was Jesus. So he was giving Jesus the glory. You can go back to Colossians 3. And then just the end, what is one way we give Jesus the glory? By giving, or I'm sorry, what is one way we do all in the name of Jesus? By giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Finishing out verse 17. All right, so believe it or not, I am almost done. I just have a few applications for us as we close. Uh, so before I get into these applications, uh, I don't know, standing up here as the music director might make some of these applications seem pointed that I am directing these at people. I am not. I am not. Uh, so these applications are not directed at anyone in specific. My desire in this application is to exhort all of us uh, to do a more faithful job, a better job for Christ here at Bible Baptist Church in our ministries. Now, I know applications could be taken broader than just our ministries, uh, but I think the Lord just laid on my heart um, about doing some applications specifically on our ministries here at Bible Baptist Church. And believe me, I tried to pray away from it because I don't like confrontation. You might know that I can't stand confrontation. And well, if I start throwing some things at you that have to do with the ministries we do, well, 
Anywho, that's a little hard for me to do. Uh, so I tried to pray my way out of this. Lord, is this really what you want? Let me make sure it's not just a cranky music director getting up here behind the pulpit and throwing things at you because I see things in the music ministry. Nope, that is not my heart. I am giving this application or exhortation uh, because I want us all to follow after these verses, really to follow after verse 17, and whatsoever you do in word or deed. Well, ministries is one of the things we do in word or deed here at Bible Baptist Church. Now, before I get into that, let me acknowledge the immediate context that's going on. I don't want to go off, although I believe the applications I'm going to go over are definitely applicable. Let's take the immediate application here. What is the context of verse 17 about doing all in the name of the Lord Jesus? What we've really gone over for the past many sermons. Very specifically, verse 16 teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, do that in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everything we've put on, sermon number three, do that in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everything we put off, you can't do those in the name of the Lord Jesus. Impossibility. You are doing that in the flesh. So sermon two about what we are to put off. So I do totally see that, acknowledge that. But just some other applications for us. Oh, and by the way, another reason I don't really like giving applications is because there's no possible way I can hit on all the applications that need to be made. So yes, I'm going to give some specific applications. I'm going to give some specific applications that I believe are needful. Uh, but saying that, there will be a countless number of applications that I'm sure the Lord will make in your life that I couldn't possibly touch on. So here are just a few. Uh, if you were in the music ministry, especially the choir, you know, for instance, that tardiness is not acceptable. You know if you are in the choir, you are tardy three times, even if you're only tardy by five seconds for each of those three times, you're out of the choir, at least for a period of time uh, until we will invite you back, uh, but you are out of the choir. Well, why do I have this? Doesn't that seem awfully strict? Well, it is, but I believe it's for the Lord. Uh, among other reasons, this is one of the reasons I have that. Because all we should do should be done in the name of the Lord. Could we really say, Jesus, in your name, I showed up late to choir today. I don't think that will bring God glory. Jesus, I showed up late to nursery today. There were two workers already in there over their heads doing stuff. I showed up late. I hope that brings you glory. Well, I can tell you, it does not. Fill in the ministry. Jesus, I showed up late to greeters ministry today, to security team today, to usher today, to sound team today. And I know I'm probably missing some ministries in there. Fill in the blank. I don't believe that that is doing, what's our specific words? All you do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, and actually, I forgot to go over two other verses with you. I'll just read them to you quickly, because uh, I do believe these get at this as well. Colossians 3.23, and whatsoever you do, just a few verses down from where we just were. So we had 17, 18, as wives submit, 19, husbands love your wives, 20, children obey, 21, fathers provoke not, 22, servants obey, 23, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. We know 1 Corinthians 10, 13, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So if you are showing up late, are you really doing it heartily as to the Lord? Of course, this has nothing to do with your car broke down on the way in. Of course, this has nothing to do with your child threw up on the way in and you need to turn around. That is not at all what this has to do with. But if you are showing up late, that's not bringing God glory. 
maybe you, of course, would never say this out loud, but Lord, in your name, I showed up late today because, well, I, I disagree with the start time. I think it's a little too early. I don't like the time it's at. We don't need that much time to do this, so I'm going to show up later. Is God not a God of order? God is a God of order. Has God not set someone over that ministry? He has. Have they ordered it? They have. Obey it. Moving on, second and really last application, and then we will be all done. Again, make your own application. There are many things I'm not going to touch on. But the idea that this is good enough. This is not something we would say, but I think I know for myself, this is something that is easy to fall into with the ministries we do. The idea that, oh, this is good enough. By way of application to the music ministry, sorry music ministry, I know you. I'm not purposely trying to bash you, but I know you. I don't know the other ministries as well, so you get all my examples. Uh, why do I have a minimum number of, number of rehearsals for special music, for instance, in order for you to sing during a service? If you don't meet a number of required rehearsals, you are not singing during a service. Why do I have that? Because I like checking off boxes? Well, I personally, I'm gift of ruling, I love checking off boxes, but that's not why I have this. I have this, yes, technically you are checking off the box. Did I get that rehearsal? Yes, check, but that is not the reason why I have that. I have that because it is not about being good enough. Could you be good enough if you do two rehearsals for special music? Oh, yeah. Some of you, yeah. Absolutely. There are some who are in the special music ministry who could be good enough, good enough after two rehearsals. But our goal is not good enough. Our goal is doing all in the name of the Lord. Our goal is whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So there could be a special music group that practices twice. No one would know they just practiced twice. Yeah, it would be good, but is it their best? Are they doing it heartily as to the Lord? Important. Greeter ministry, nursery, AV, cleaning, again, fill in the blank. If Jesus was sitting next to you, standing next to you when you were doing your ministry, would he be proud of the work that is being done? Or is it just good enough? Greeters, you come in on Wednesday after a long day at work or a long day with the children. You're standing out there greeting. Would you change if Jesus Christ was walking in that door? Would you greet him a little differently? Then you just greet, greeted Billy Bob, who walked in the door. Nursery. Praise the Lord, I'm not in the nursery. <laughs> you guys have an awfully tough job. Nursery, though. Let's say it's been an extremely tough nursery. You've been in there. The, our new pastor, Pastor Stockton, is going like an hour late hour past, so you're back there just going, 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 and you are getting tired, and then you know what? I'm going to let those two nursery workers deal with that, or I'm going to let that slide. That's not that important, but it is if you can teach them about Jesus Christ. So yes, it's tiring, but remember the work you're doing is unto the Lord. The work you're doing, you're doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus. AV. Again, I'm just giving random examples. These are no one in specific. But AV, I know you guys got presets back there. They're hiding back there. I'm on a preset probably right now. I don't know, I'm making this up. Do you still listen as things are going on to adjust and make it perfect? Or is, oh, the preset, we're good to go. I hit the preset. I hear the orchestra, 
or are you fine-tuning as you go? Cleaning ministry, you come in throughout the week, no one knows you're here. No one goes over to that corner in the church, I'm just not going to sweep there today. No one will know. No one goes there. No one checks the corners. You are doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do it heartily as to the Lord. The Lord sees things that no one else does. Amen. The Lord sees your efforts. We might not, but the Lord does. And then I'm not going to go into this, but our old pastor, uh, one of my favorite messages was Lily Work. I think that basically sums us up. No one saw those lilies that they were working on. They were way up high. I forget the height, but they were way up high. No one would ever see them, but they're specifically detailed. May all we do be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. All right, and that is the end of my sermon. Let's go ahead and pray. Um, yeah. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you uh, just for this short time to get into your word and really overall for the past uh, three other sermons, Lord. Lord, I know that I personally have grown and need to continue working on applying even what I've taught in your word. Uh, Lord, Colossians 3, there is an awful lot to apply. There is an awful lot to do. Uh, Lord, I pray that we would, as a church, not just leave these sermons, not just leave these messages, uh, but that we would take these, we would review these, we would read through Colossians 3 uh, time and time again, Lord, and that we would really apply what has been taught. Uh, and Lord, specifically to today's sermon, I do pray that we would do our best unto you. Uh, Lord, I do pray... Well, number one, of course, my goal was not to offend anyone in this room, uh, but Lord, I do believe I gave right applications to your word. But Lord, I pray that we would take these applications and we would make our own applications in our lives. There's no way I could possibly touch on even just uh, the littlest amount of where this could be applied, Lord. But I do pray that we would... Uh, think on doing everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Specifically, verse 17 is about words and deeds. Uh, verse 23, all we do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Specifically for our ministries, I can think how much greater our ministries would be in serving you, Lord, if we really did it heartily to you and not to man. May it not just be good enough, but may it be the best that we can muster unto you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.